Here at the Security Operations Center of a large US-based global manufacturing organization, the Security Operations Center, or SOC, is tasked with protecting the organization's intellectual property. The security analyst is on the front lines of the battle between his security team and their sophisticated and ever-adapting adversaries. In this struggle, RSA Security Analytics is a powerful ally that enables the analyst to be confident that the company's most sensitive data and systems are protected. The analyst receives an alert that there are an unusual number of failed VPN logins on a particular user account. Is this someone testing the security controls of the system, or is a serious attack underway? Our first step is to investigate the failed logins that caused the alert. The first thing we notice is that a large number of these failed logins originated from the same IP address in Belarus. While the organization has done some business in Belarus, it's unusual for employees to log in from that part of the world. This login could be innocent, such as an employee visiting family and forgetting his password. But without further investigation, we can't be sure that's the cause of the suspicious activity. We need to know more about this IP address, which is now an internal one since getting on the VPN. Let's see what else it's been doing. With security analytics, we can hone in on the activities related to this IP address. By leveraging both log and network packet-based information, we can see the activity of that user in Belarus using 192.168.5.10. This information allows the analyst to rule out a more innocent explanation for these logins. After analyzing the network activity of this user, Security Analytics has further indicated that this user has been using hacker tools. In this case, we will now drill down into these suspicious network sessions so we can determine what our attacker is after. We see that some of these sessions are going after highly valued digital assets. Using RSA Archer integrated with Security Analytics, we see more information about these assets through the use of the Asset Criticality Intelligence, or ACI, component. We see that the critical asset in play is a file server containing loads of sensitive data. Back in Security Analytics, we have received more information about the traffic coming from this important file server at 192.168.5.172. In fact, a set of files have been moved from the file server, been zipped up, and have been sent from this server outside of the United States. We see this file was sent to Uzbekistan. That's pretty suspicious, so let's click on loot.zip, the name of the file that was exfiltrated, to see what was in it. Extracting the file shows that there was really sensitive information in it. What security vulnerability did the attacker take advantage of? First, let's go back and look at all the traffic from 192.168.5.189. This is a development system that we discovered did not have the right security controls active on it. Security analytics have discovered that the attacker was able to get sensitive data from the file server back to the breach development system using Telnet as the communication protocol between the two systems. We are able to conclude that the file server has also been misconfigured, giving that Telnet has been left enabled. Now we see everything the attacker did, including the credentials they used and the commands they executed across the Telnet session. With the information of where the extracted files originated and the credentials used by the attacker, we can work backwards to create a clear map showing how the organization was attacked, and all within a few minutes. Armed with this information, the security analyst can now initiate the proper response procedures to remediate the issue. Our analyst can quickly notify the appropriate organizations and individuals using the system's automated incident management. In addition, the analyst begins an IT procedure to address these security vulnerabilities. With security analytics, organizations can gain broad and timely visibility into the critical information needed to help detect today's advanced threats. Not long after solving the data exfiltration issue, our security analyst receives another alert from security analytics that there is some abnormal activity happening at the internal IP address 10.10.36.30. This alert tells us that there is a large amount of DNS and SMTP traffic coming from this host. 
Let's use security analytics to look further into these SMTP sessions. The first thing we notice is that there's a single user emailing many different employees from one email account. When we look at content type, we can see that these emails apparently have something to do with Facebook logins and that all of the emails are being sent to internal addresses. Let's see what else this user has been doing. Here's an interesting red flag that we will want to investigate. We've received a risk warning regarding the domain that is being displayed to the user. With security analytics, we can recreate the entire email that's been sent out in order to investigate this warning more thoroughly. Now we can see that this email came from Facebook to the user's personal email that they accessed at work. We can also see that the email contains a link directing the user to Facebook. However, when we view all the metadata for this link, we see that it does not in fact direct the user to the Facebook domain. Instead, clicking on the link takes you to an odd IP address. This is why Security Analytics originally flagged this session as suspicious. To investigate further, we need to isolate the network traffic between the host IP we're investigating and this unusual IP address. First, we notice that our strange IP address is located in Belarus. Back at our risk warnings, we see another session that has been flagged. After closer inspection, we can see that there are server-side Python scripts and remotely run Windows command shell commands that have been run. All of this remote activity is being communicated over an NTP port, a port which is normally used for time synchronization requests and not for executing commands. We'll use security analytics to render this session so we can see the actual commands that were executed remotely on this system. We observe that the remote user in Belarus has created a hidden file, so now we're almost certain that this is an attacker who is remotely controlling our user's system. The attacker's script is spamming internal addresses in what is most likely a spear phishing attack. A few minutes ago, our analysts knew only that an unusually large number of employees were receiving emails from the same internal address. But now with the information acquired through security analytics, the security team can launch a wider investigation into what happened, who else was infected, and being a strong position to consult threat experts about other similar attacks. To better manage this incident workflow, an incident is automatically created in Archer using Advanced Incident Management for Security, and notifications are sent out to all employees to inform them of the suspicious email and the steps that should be taken to prevent the infection of their systems. In addition, via security analytics, the analyst can push information regarding this attack to the RSA live service. RSA will evaluate the particulars of this attack before sending updates to all RSA live feed subscribers, enabling other security professionals to have the latest attack information in near real time. With security analytics, the analyst has gained comprehensive visibility into the network and gained actionable intelligence quickly. And when security analysts have the information they need in real time, they have a better chance of staying one step ahead of the bad guys.